Day for so at the stroke of midnight, lawmakers chose to pay tribute to House Speaker Michael Bush. He passed away on Sunday, one day before the final day of the legislative session. WMR 2 News' Megan Knight is live this morning in Annapolis, in Annapolis with more on those tributes to Michael Bush and also some of what we saw here, what passed and what didn't pass on the final day of the session. Megan. Yeah, that final day, certainly a cram session for lawmakers, Christian, but uh, definitely had a bit more of a somber feel to it than it usually does as those lawmakers were continuing to pay their respects to House Speaker Michael Bush, who passed away the day before the last day of session. They ended the session last night by sharing words and memories about Bush, who's one of the longest serving House Speakers in Maryland history. They dropped a couple balloons, but before that, there was a lot of work to be done as lawmakers were cramming to get as many bills passed as possible. Now, among the bills that did pass include the Clean Energy Jobs Act with a goal to have Maryland using 50% renewable electricity by 2030 and 100% by 2040. Also, Laura and Reed's bill passed. That was named after the pregnant teacher in Howard County who was murdered allegedly by her boyfriend. That bill would enhance a penalty for killing an unborn child. There there's also the oyster bill that passed with an override of Governor Hogan's veto to permanently protect five oyster sanctuaries in the bay. That was a top priority of Michael Bush before he passed away. Another top priority of his was the University of Maryland medical system that would have banned board members from making a business deal with UMMS. This became, of course, a huge focal point of the session once it came to light. The mayor, Catherine Pugh, was one of the board members who had a $500,000 deal with UMMS to purchase copies of her Healthy Holly books. Folks need to ensure that there's a level of transparency and accountability associated with the board and the operations of it, particularly for the fact that they receive state money on a regular basis. So um, I think that the UMS issue has come to light. Um, hopefully next session we can come back and look at not just looking at UMS, but several boards that are in the same posture that receive state funding. And not every bill did make it through the General Assembly, including one that would have extended the statute of limitations for sex abuse cases involving minors. Also a pretty big bill that did not pass was a bill that would have given more money to uh, the Stronic Group to invest in their Pimlico racetrack that they own. Also the Laurel racetrack, which is where the Stronic Group really wants to move Preakness to. Of course, Baltimore City delegates not into that plan at all. So right now, the future of Preakness and where it's going to be held after the year 2020 that is still all up in the air so the next step now governor larry hogan's going to do some finger and hand exercises there and get ready to decide the hundreds of bills that did pass the general assembly and he has until may 28th to do so we're live in annapolis i'm megan knight wmar 2 news